Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Ron Line Report. This is our wrap-up of the Romania Muscle Fest Pro in Bucharest, Romania. Here again, man, every weekend this guy has people in these post-Olympia shows. This time he had two out of the three in the open. Uh, please welcome all the way from Las Vegas, Milos, the mind, Sarshev. What's up, Milos? Uh, it's great to be here again, uh, Ron, as you know, I like to discuss, not because of my athletes, every show and uh, my views, but uh, unfortunately, again, another sleepless night, and uh, I just heard from my wife, like, oh, you, you look uh, sick. Like, oh. <laughs> well, you, I yeah, mean, you... but uh, before, when I talk about sickness, I'm going to tell you now, I can uh, say publicly, all three of my athletes, Samson and uh, Bay Cruz and uh, Cabin, were sick to the point that I didn't know if they're going to compete. Uh, Samson didn't want to tell me anything. He finally told me the day before. Bay Cruz was actually in the hospital on the IV day before he left uh, yeah and there was uh, there was uh, some significant major uh, cold that they were actually thinking of what if this is uh, covid and then kevin he really crashed crashed him kevin from germany gebhardt uh, he was in a hot tub most of the day and uh, it was like one of those things do you compete or not he was already there and i don't know if now it's like before in my time, when, when you sign a contract and then you don't compete, it's like a potential $5,000 penalty. So those, those yeah. were the Wayne D'Amelio days. Those days are long gone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, now you, dude, in those days, you had to sign your contracts like in January, for all the shows you were going to do that year. And if unless you had a, a medical reason with a doctor's uh, a note from a doctor, you had to do the show or else. Yeah, you were fine. But what happened? Yeah. to uh, What happened to Samson? What kind of sickness did he have? Yeah, he, he, he had a cold. He had, a, you know, some cold and a, a typical. But, but listen, when you travel to uh, five different countries, uh, back and forth, yeah. and, uh, you know, what I appreciate about Samson, he went to uh, San Marino, so he went to uh, for a, a touristic day with his wife and, and uh, sightseeing. He went to Egypt. I don't know if you've seen day before <laughs> he went to see a pyramids and uh, he was uh, on the camel and everything else to go. Oh, and i was just gonna about to say hey don't go for a touristic trip before the show and then i see on instagram he's on the camel like okay so late but uh yeah so uh look uh, one thing that i wish always is everything ideal but uh, i'm sure that if you ask any guy that is competing you know they have their own adversities and uh you know Public only sees what is on the stage. They don't care what happened, you know, week before, day before, and stuff like that. And this is uh, important important to note that there are other types of sicknesses, not just COVID. It's not always COVID, everybody. Sometimes people get colds yeah. or flus or whatever. But um, you know, the, all the competitors had to be tested this yeah, time. Yeah. They were all tested. And uh, actually, there was a scare for me, like, what if? Some of them are positive. I mean, it, it, it would be no good. But I'm delighted again. Like I said, I have a two guys in the top three. Yeah. You know, and uh, I'm super pleased with both of them. Yeah. Um, sure. Discussing the judging. Uh, first, congratulations to Rafael Brandao. I love the guy. I love his physique. Uh, I think this is the direction we want to go. Aesthetically pleasing, yeah. uh, beautiful physique, physiques, and uh, he had uh, so many adversities that I heard of. Uh, he uh, beat them all, overcame, and played second, close second uh, last week, and, and he won this, this week. If you ask me, he didn't repeat his condition from Prague. So uh, I think he was uh, a little bit fuller, but, you know, therefore softer. Uh, when you're already not in a crazy condition in one show and then you get softer for the next show, then you have to, like, kind of wonder. And uh, mm. uh, I'm going to point out something again, not to go against the judges or anything, but uh, everybody was discussing that the judging score sheet from, uh, I think, Arnold Classic. And uh, uh, if you see judging score sheet from this show, there's only one round that is being judged. Huh. So there is uh, only pre-judging results. And then uh, uh, finals, when you're supposed to calculate the scores. And we know that last week, uh, Regan was clearly se second after the first round. Yeah. And then he was clearly fourth at uh, uh, judging and being third. Yeah. So uh, I was wondering because, look, this was not a, a straight victory show. I mean, uh, even if some people saw uh, Rafael uh, winning, I'm sure there's a lot of people that uh, saw Samson. And mm -hmm. many even experts are saying if uh, Bechru Stabani won this show, nobody would complain. Yeah. 
And uh, this is really how I saw it. Uh, uh, the cruise came most conditions, really mm. super tight strided. He had that uh, kind of thin skin and uh, next level conditioning of uh, Hadi Chupan, his mm -hmm. countryman. Yeah. Especially when he turned around and uh, squeezed those glutes and hamstrings and back. Uh, my comments for uh, the cruise is he didn't hold the poses long enough. So he didn't have a enough chances to impress the judges. He would really literally hit them for a couple of seconds and, and go to the other pose. And uh, uh, he doesn't speak English, right? So, you know, the Google translator and then my, my good friend, uh, Reza Zinotlu, oh. uh, great Iranian bodybuilder, he was translating. Sometimes, you know, things get lost in translation. He was amateur competing maybe five years ago. He won that world championship and uh, I was waiting when he's gonna make this pro debut and then all these years didn't happen, but finally, as you know, he was scheduled to go to uh, Egypt and didn't get the visa. Prague didn't get the visa. Now we are facing possibility to go two weeks from now to Alicante, and he doesn't believe he's going to get the visa. Hold on, was so, this was this his first pro show? That's his uh, pro wow, debut. Yes. Wow, he looked phenomenal. Wow. Yes. Very impressive. Yeah. So I, I think he put his name on the map with people now realize how good he is and they're going to look for it beautiful shape crazy v taper symmetry proportions front double biceps back double biceps you can kill for i mean you know really side poses when you see that uh, hanging hamstring and strided glutes yeah uh, yeah uh, we came a little bit lighter probably about uh, two three kilos four six pounds lighter that uh, he could have he mm -hmm. just couldn't eat with all this sickness I mean, it was all the food was making him sick to his stomach. Yeah. So uh, at that note, when you have to choose, okay, well, I, I can't really have that fullness. Then let me go for this uh, dry, strided look because maybe that's going to be flavor of the day. Contrary what? to uh, Samson, you see, Samson for me uh, was driest in uh, Egypt, but it didn't really award him. So we went for a little bit fuller look, mm -hmm. and all the judges. Uh, love his look in Prague, and he he won unanimously pre-judging and finals. So if judges are giving you direction where to go, it's okay. If I have to choose between this and that, okay, let's go just for fullness. Hmm. Uh, apparently, uh, Rafael Brandao also went for fullness, yeah. and he went his way. So let me uh, make this point to say across. Uh, differences between these guys are so minuscule that this could happen. Flip flop, one show. Nathan Deasha uh, wins over Samson. Next time Samson beat him, right? So who is better bodybuilder? And you know, when you question it, Nathan Deasha was at his absolute best in the last show in Prague, but yeah. the place is the, the, the worst, okay? So he also had to question how is uh, uh, being judged and what is the best possible look? You see, you and I, we're gonna look for condition, right? We're looking, that would be like a main. Um, that's uh, that's why, honestly, I had Beirut's. I, I, I think Rafael's got a prettier shape. Samson has a prettier shape, but I really would have had no problem with Beirut's winning. He was by far the most conditioned man in the open class. Probably even, I don't, I don't think even free us or Ashkenazi. He was the most conditioned guy I saw on that show. So yeah, I, 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 would ask, agree I, I want to ask you why, you know, what does he need to do? What would he have needed to do to beat Raphael and Samson at the show? I, I really, this time, okay, it's the first time on the scene. So uh, I don't know exactly who were the judges, but uh, if Steve Weinberger was there, I'm sure Steve would give them uh, multiple chances, mm -hmm. several rounds of the same guys. They didn't get this time. Mm -hmm. And the way uh, they, they were kind of, not really rushed, but uh, um, he, he kind of, you see, when you do the, uh, you say front double biceps, pay attention to how long Steve takes mm -hmm. to call the next pose. Yeah. And uh, here in, a, in a, a live stream, you could see they were going much faster. Another thing for a back cruise that, uh, that I want to say, if you look, front double biceps is state of the art, okay? Back double biceps, same thing. Back lat spread, same thing. Front lat spread, very, very good. Side triceps is phenomenal. Side chest, excellent, right? Uh, most muscular good. Okay, he is a little bit flattish, but still very, very impressive. So when you put together so many great poses, 
if he was really compared, okay, and hold the pose, let me be compared, I think the judges would see it much better. Hmm. Uh, some of us, we saw it, and I'm glad that you say it, and many other people I heard uh, uh, said the same thing. Uh, Giles said the same thing. If uh, uh, Behruz won, nobody on this earth would complain, uh, nobody. Uh, Samson, of course, repeating kind of, I, I believe he repeated the look from Prague yeah. uh, that was quite dominant and they had the uh, same competitor for, you know, second place in you know, not as good shape. It kind of makes you wonder, okay, if there was a different judging panel, maybe it would go a different way. Uh, Rafael still had a dominant legs, of course, excellent, beautiful shape upstairs. Yeah. Uh, still back poses. Some people say, oh yeah, he won the back poses. I, I don't see it. And then especially hamstring glutes from the back as well, which is half of the body, was not comparable, you know, when uh, you really look. Uh, but to make uh, clear, I'm delighted to have uh, Rafael qualify for Olympia and uh, going uh, on the stage, because if he makes uh, huge improvements, we're gonna have a, a lot of aesthetic guys. Mm. Let's say uh, Regan, um, Brandon Curry, uh, and then it's going to be Samson, it's going to be Rafael, it's going to be uh, many of aesthetic people. Yeah. Uh, I, I can say Hunter Labrada as well, right? He's the borderline, you know, going in both directions. So I would like to see aesthetics and shape overtake the size mm. because this is also going to be, you know, throughout the next 10 years, usually a rule. And I love um, Big Ramy. Yeah. And I think he's rightful Mr. Olympia. And you can never outsize him, just like Ronnie Coleman was not outsized, uh, like uh, Jay Cutler or Dorian Yates. They were all uh, bigger and therefore Mr. Olympias. But uh, I just think that if you bring that beauty, you're going to have a, a more mainstream uh, uh, acceptance. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I think uh, we're, we're starting to see a lot more of the aesthetic physiques come back to the open Mr. Olympia. Whereas for a few years, they really they were very, very rare sight. So that's a good thing. I do want to talk about the fourth place. 22 years old. He had just made his pro debut last week in Prague. Uh, I think he was seventh. And he got fourth here. Is Amir Omerajic. Uh, not a very yeah, I'm going to say this again. Remember his name. Amir Omerajic. Omerajic. Amir. 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 Right? Amir. 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 Yep. Omerajic. 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 In our language, G is G. Yeah. You know, it's not uh, Omeragic, it's Omeragic. Omeragic. And uh, yeah, what you, what you say, 22 years old, and look at the density. Like, from the back, I mean, the, the, this was puzzling me. He was so dense, so hard, polished, triated, uh, Christmas tree, glutes, uh, lats, you know, everything like, oh my God. Mm. Uh, if you, you know, just look at the body and the muscle, you would never guess that this is 22 year old. No. And uh, yeah, he, he is really now uh, even more motivated. Uh, he was motivated in seventh place. And I imagine, you know, 20 something guys in placing fourth, going in two weeks uh, to Alicante with, <laughs> with aspirations to possibly be in the mix to win. Yeah, why not? So where do you think he's originally from like Serbia or Croatia? Uh, his, well, I, I think it's from Bosnia. Oh, you know, Bosnia. The, Bosnia, yeah. It's another one of those countries. Uh, but, uh, my, my former Yugoslavia, my, my countryman, yeah, speaks mm -hmm. my language, of course. And like I said, uh, uh, about a year and a half ago, I, I was helping him, oh. you know, and uh, uh, now Chris Asita took over. They're doing a hell of a job. He was so conditioned yeah. in both shows. And not just that, when he didn't win a pro card, you know, three maybe competitions, he was placing second. So he was just about to turn pro and he didn't. He was in crazy condition. And now uh, he, when he won pro card and now as a pro, he's repeating uh, this kind of condition. So, you know, some people have ability to repeat and be in this kind of condition and change quickly and get in this kind of condition. And some people, it's much slower process and some people really never achieved. So on that note, let's talk about uh, fifth place, uh, uh, Quinton. Yeah, Quinton Aria, Quint Beastwood from, from the Toronto, Canada area. Yeah. Very, very uh, impressive. I, I remember him when he did his first yeah. show. He had, 
he almost went classic because he almost he was right on the verge of being light enough to be a classic Z competitor, but he's still not the biggest guy up there, but such beautiful shape and structure. He's someone yeah. I, I would love to see him fill that frame up, but still, he looked great, great conditioning, and just what a beautiful physique. Yeah, absolutely beautiful physique, good conditioning, you know, but you see, that's, that's what I was uh, leading to. Uh, many guys, when you analyze them, they're lean, they're uh, dry enough, right? Yeah. But then they don't appear so conditioned and you wonder what is going on, right? Mm -hmm. So some people say, okay, with a little bit more fullness and uh, glycogen pushing through the skin, you know, it makes some people look harder and, and, and more defined. And for some people it actually goes the opposite way. Mm -hmm. For me, he didn't leave the impression of that, uh, like Amir Amaragid's type of conditioning, like, whoa, they, they could be, uh, you know, uh, very well, very close body fat levels. Mm. Uh, but uh, Amir was appearing, uh, uh, you know, leaps and bounds, better condition than him. So Quentin uh, has a beautiful um, future in front of him. For that uh, height, I think he's about six foot. I don't know. Yeah, yeah he is. Uh, he, he still made a little bit more uh, weight from the back, thickness of the back, you know, uh, thickness, roundness of a, of a chest, yeah. great arms, great legs. Uh, which, which really, I think I mentioned this, interestingly, if you look many people throughout the years, there was either, you know, dominant torso or dominant yeah. limbs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some people put it together both, but uh, he is uh, a limb guy. He has uh, legs and arms that can grow. So if I was uh, him, I would really focus on torso and, and bombing uh, back and, and chest. You know, just to get that, uh, you know, thickness. Have you noticed, uh, Milos, people with longer arms and legs seem to be limb dominant? They seem to be the ones that have a harder time building the chest in the back? <laughs> I didn't, but uh, you probably, if I really know, you know, my, my brain is dead because of sleepless nights, so I can't really <laughs> focus on anybody yeah, directly. But uh, that's quite possible. You know how it is when you train with the guys with the long legs and uh, long, long arms, and then they say, oh, it's easy for you to bench or squat because you have a short limbs. <laughs> yeah. You know, I always tell them the opposite. You have a long ones; it should be easier for you. Yeah. You know, just to, to you know, mess with the brain. But uh, again, you know, to touch the subject of training, even though this is a report for the contest. Yeah. Uh, like, okay, I was training uh, Jamie Johal just uh, yesterday. Legs, okay, and uh, like he said, he said I took his soul. Before the uh, actual training, he would say like, he doesn't really connect so much with the uh, like, hamstring. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, upper quads, he doesn't. Uh, I say, oh, 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 oh. you're going to have to connect. And I'm going to bring you to the point uh, that you're going to connect. And every guy in every exercise, they can achieve that. You go to the full range of motion and go in a slower tempo, you know, focus on, on that muscle and then try to start. And there's going to be point that uh, it's depending on the strength curve if it's in the beginning mid-range or the end range whatever you're going to start feeling oh here is where i feel the muscle okay so now you establish that connection so let it burn a little bit and then bring yourself to that position where it's burning the most okay mm -hmm. then you prolong you know when you get out of the burn zone that tells you, you know let's stay in that burn zone for a while so you can connect and then once you connect, you can prolong range of motion. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, how I would do it for, for the people and say, oh, I don't feel my back, I don't feel this, I don't feel that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, pick the exercises and uh, find that uh, uh, burning zone and stay in that zone. Mm -hmm. So I would do it for Quinton, chest and back, you know, everything, especially, you know, chest could be, uh, you know, on a negative, on the stretch position and the positive and the peak contraction. So there's always four things you can change the tempo and, uh, and uh, focus on eccentric, lengthening position, concentric and shortening position. Yeah. So, you know, just giving my, my views so for, for some people that like to hear that opinion, uh, I see it works tremendous. And then look, the changing the tempo, right? Yeah. What I do, you know, that 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 down to one second. You can do this eccentrically. So first rep, go 10 seconds down, hmm. second, nine, and then eight, and then seven, right? Hmm. So that's eccentrically. You can do the same concentrically. Go slow up. It's a nightmare for legs, for shoulders, for chest. Go slow concentrically, absolute nightmare. Then 
peak contraction, right? Squeeze for 10 seconds on the first rep, nine. I mean, people don't do it. They say, I mean, you're just trying to be different. No, I'm not trying to be different for the sake of being different. I experiment to find, okay, what works. Normally it's accepted, you know, uh, four second eccentric, zero or one second in the set position, and then explosive concentric, and maybe peak contraction at the top or continuous tension. So why? Why? You change the tempo, angle, grip, stance, anything. By the way, I don't know if you saw in the YouTube comments, somebody tried to come up with a name for your training system. It was an MS, MSGST, like Milo Sarshev giant set training. MSGST, I kind of like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the rounding out the top six for open was Milan Shadek from Czech Republic. Who, yeah, Milan uh, Sadek, Sadek. Sadek. Oh, I, I Sadek. love uh, Sadek, Sadek, yeah. Sadek, Sadek. You see, I'm uh, Shadek, yeah. he's Sadek. Ah, different country. Uh, great physique, very good conditioning, you see. Uh, very aesthetically pleasing, complete, nothing missing. Uh, I agree with Giles, he could be as high as Fort, you know, yeah. with the completeness and, uh, and uh, just total package. Uh, maybe on a smaller side, so that's why uh, I guess uh, fourth and fifth place finishers went above him. But a uh, great uh, structure, balance, and very, very good conditioning. But he used to be even in crazier condition. So, hmm. you know, once you establish yourself in uh, that uh, super peel, the rip, the crazy shredded, yeah. <laughs> then you come off. They still, you know, better than you know, most of the guys. But yeah, he was. Uh, formidable. I, I love uh, his physique, and I, I hope he continues. I think he can be a major factor in in Alicante. Yeah, I mean, he was a two twelve competitor. He won a couple yes. shows, and I, yes. he, I don't know what he weighs now. He's probably about I would say like two twenty five, maybe now, maybe two thirty. Yeah. I, I would say that. Yeah, I would say that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he was possibly too tall for a uh, yeah, two twelve. You know how it is when you're taller. And you make two twelve, then they look at you like, okay, it's kind of weird. Which, speaking of that, the third place finisher in the two twelve, mm. uh, um, Jafar. Jafar Azizi. I can't even say this long uh, last name. I, I would try it, but I think the Persians out there are going to get angry at me because I'll f it up. Gafar Nizad. Gaf Gafar Nizad. Gafar Nizad. I don't know. I could spell. Yeah, I'll say Jafar. Yeah. Jafar. Uh, Azizi. He's, uh, he looks like he's about 5'9". I don't know how tall he really is. He looks pretty tall. Yes. Uh, you see, this is a puzzling thing. How did he even make it to 12? Because uh, he had uh, a lot of muscle, superb conditioning, you know, superb. Uh, and I, I've seen him compete in open division. I didn't check on uh, musclememory.com, a great website. Uh, but I think he qualified for Olympia two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. But as uh, any every other Iranian, you know, had the trouble getting this and, and not getting that. And if I can say this again now, if there is anyone on this planet Earth that can do something that uh, within two weeks, uh, Iranian guys can get the visa to compete in Alicante, that will be a major thing for, uh, for IBB, for the sport, for that competition, and for deserving Iranian bodybuilders. Yeah, I understand that if you're single uh, in Iran, uh, it's very hard to get this uh, anywhere. <laughs> and most of those guys are single. Uh, Wait a so, minute. You, have to, you have to be married to get a visa or something? Well, yeah, I, I even remember back in the day when I was coming to US, uh, if I was uh, uh, married and uh, uh, I leave my wife in my country, they would issue me the visa because they're counting on this. I'm going to go back to my wife. <laughs> you don't think you, what's that word? Uh, what's that, word? That, that's, that was a nice way to, to do divorce without actually getting the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do they call that yeah. uh, when people do that? Like that's what Sergio Oliva did years in the sixties. What's it called when somebody, uh, they escaped their country, basically. What's that? There's a term for it. I can't remember what it is. Uh, 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 asyl, uh, asylum? Asylum. No, it's, it's something asylum, like yeah. that. It's yeah. something like that. Yeah, they 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 basically no they uh, uh, defect. No. They de it was it usually was communist this. countries defect. You're defecting from the Soviet Union or Cuba or whatever. Yeah, but that's uh, I, I can't yeah. say the name, but there's uh, actually a uh, quite famous bodybuilder back in the '90s that was married 
uh, in four different countries with four different. What? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. It was you? Uh, was it, was I, it you? I can't disclose no. much, but uh, trust me. Yeah, you know him. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. No, okay. Don't, don't guess. I will, no, I was going to say you. It was probably you, right? But uh, no. No, 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 uh, no, no. no. <laughs> let's let's talk about two twelve. Uh, it's tough. A, another win for Angel called it on free us from Spain. I think. I don't know how many wins this guy has now, but he went into the Olympia last year with four wins. I think this yes. is his third win this year already. Fourth, he's won. This guy's just, he's phenomenal. But I did think when Ahmad Ashkenani came back for the finals, it was, I could have given the show to him. He tightened up so much in, it was like four hours, three hours. It wasn't much Yeah, time. you see, I, I have to be honest, like you are, uh, last time you said you didn't watch that. I didn't catch 212. Because I, I kind of uh, uh, signed up for it a little bit late, and 212 was already finished. Like, oh my God, I thought they would go uh, last before yeah. uh, open division. So I didn't see the prejudging. Yeah. I heard from uh, Giles that, yeah, also Ashkenani, just like in the last show, dramatically improved from uh, prejudging to finals. So when I looked at them, you see, this is interesting. When you just look at uh, Ashkenani, he's a monster. His stick is big. Right? So, I actually thought he's going to be uh, overpowering uh, Angel Calderon, mm -hmm. but no, it was the opposite. When I see them together, I say, "Oh my God, uh, and, uh, Angel is so big, so thick, so round." Yes, yeah. it is. And, and look, even though this is not the best conditioning of uh, Angel Calderon because he has established himself as a razor sharp, super dry, like crazy conditioning. Uh, you know, with his coach uh, Francisco, uh, the so this was if you saw him for the first time, great conditioning, uh, separation, fullness, uh, really. But uh, I always compare the guys to the previous show also, and I said, would I uh, go for a drier look? Well, maybe they purposely went for a fuller look to match Tashkanani's size and maybe overpower him. And uh, uh, Angel Cardinal has this uh, deep cuts anyway so he appeared very conditioned anyway even though for me he was like about 15 percent off <laughs> he was still in very very good condition yeah and uh i was wondering by the score sheets right oh, yeah, if there would be uh changes from uh pre-judging and finals because uh both you and giles you know mentioned that shenani made a tremendous uh improvements yeah but uh on the score sheets it's only one round you know, judging. So I'm sure they're going to explain maybe they had the same uh, points in the finals. But then you see as a totals, when you look, look at the totals, yeah. it's, it's supposed to be double. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can't have a total of three points after two rounds as a first place. You can't. You have a five judges, one high, one low is being erased. You have a three first place votes, that's three points. Right. So this is, this is something, again, not to steer uh, anything. Uh, I just think that uh, that kind of consistency, you know, has to be, um, you know, implemented because even when you see the, um, the, the actual blueprint, yeah. you have uh, judging, you have a finals, you have a totals. So finals is empty. And uh, that, that is like, uh, Playing a soccer game and uh, you count only first half, not a second or two quarters in the football without uh, ending the match. So, yeah, I wonder because a lot of times things change at the finals. And uh, if I understand, Ashkanani, in your view, could possibly win it. Oh, yeah. At the finals. I, I have no problem. But let me ask you this. You're a coach and uh, he's got a coach. I'm out of out of the Oxygen Gym. If this is the second weekend in a row that he comes in better for the finals, why can't they figure out how to bring him in looking like that for the judging? And then he would have won this, probably, maybe. Well, uh, you know, it's such a subject. So if I say it, I would be uh, uh, I can, again. All right, then do well, it. But listen, uh, I'm going to say openly, uh, the, I understand that uh, a camel crew usually have their guys going with the cheat meals and stuff like that. And for me, this is always absolute nonsense. You're gonna cheat with something that you usually don't need. You're gonna get the, you know, hydrogenated fats. You're gonna have a god again. What kind of fillers, uh, emulsifiers there, and uh, you know whatever they put in all this, and then 
French fries and all. What is this nutritionally going to do to your body so you can maybe store the glycogen? Which part of that junk food that you're going to be eating? Yeah, and listen, I competed 110 times, 72 times as a pro. I did that the junk loading one time, one time only, just to try it. Yeah. 99 uh, Night of Champions. And I was so inflamed, so bloated. Uh, you know, and it was my answer that I should have known and I knew it. But you see, uh, you have to try everything one time. So for that show, I decided I was going against Paul Dillette and Marcus Rule and Dexter Jackson and Paul Yablonitsky. You know, so I said, you know, let, let, let me just see what happens. And contrary to this, uh, I mean, I could do crazy loading, which I did 99 Olympia for a whole week, well over a thousand grams of carbs a day, Jeez. every single day, but clean carbs. Yeah. So on that note, when I was, uh, even I, I posted a video from a backstage on a, a Legion show, which Regan, uh, Regan, you know, yeah. Yeah, Legion show with Regan was second and uh, Stanimal was there, right? Stanimal was backstage looking for a cookie. And I just, and, I, and it's actually filmed. I didn't mean it. And then maybe, you know, some people are going to judge me for it. But, but I just asked him a question. What is this cookie going to do to you right now? Because mm -hmm. that's like minutes before the stage. Yeah. You know, which part of the cookie, that uh, fat part of the cookie? Oh, no, maybe sugar part or glucose part. Yeah. Not even sugar. Because sugar is uh, sucrose. Fructose and glucose mixed together are 50-50, right? Yeah. So if you take a, for a glucose, it's 50%, but fructose has to go to liver, liver have to convert it to, it's not efficient, right? Yeah. But you take a, you take a, this kind of stupid cookies that you don't know how many ingredients when you, when you read the nutrition information, like 20 of them, like yeah. what is this gonna do to you, right? So I just like people, to start thinking. I say, I cannot teach you anything, but I can make you think like Socrates. Mm. Uh, if your purpose is to load the glycogen or have a glucose in your bloodstream so you can have a, that pump and stuff like that, you're looking for glucose, not that fat, especially not that kind of fat. So what would you eat? What's straight, what's like the, the straightest way to get glucose in your body? Glucose tablets. Glucose, hey, glucose tablets, tablets like a diabetic, like a diabetic would have. Yeah, that's a pure glucose. I mean, okay. within three minutes, is in your bloodstream. I did this back back in the day, backstage. And uh, remember, we were talking to Mohammed Makavi. He was doing the same thing. Uh, I mean, this is purest form of glucose. Yeah, you can have like, let's say, Gatorade or, you know, some carbo drinks. Uh, many people actually do nowadays. Many of those uh, either dextrose or, or uh, maltodextrin uh, glucose polymers. And then they mix it with a little bit of salt, you know, and... Uh, then they put a little bit of alcohol and all kinds of stuff for that crazy pump, you know, before. You know, this could and will make a possible difference because it's quick, it's pre-digested, it's right there. Like I said, it takes three minutes to go in the bloodstream. But cookie, how long is it going to take you to digest that cookie? Are you counting on being there in 15 minutes? Okay. Uh, that uh, small part, there is the sugar. If it's a my cookie dealer cookie that Juan Morales' wife Karen sell, it would take you hours to digest that thing. They're enormous. They're delicious. Let's move on to third place. Uh, like we said, yeah. he's the one of the taller guys in the show. But wow, was he shredded from Iran, Jafar Gafarnazad Azizi? Uh, yes. I don't. I don't know if this guy belongs in two twelve because I'd like to see him put a little more mass on and go open. But man, still very impressive. Yeah. He was shredded. Shredded, separated, polished. My God, mm -hmm. I mean, really, um, he lost in a size department, basically, yeah. okay? Yeah. But when you look at the sharpness, conditioning, tie-ins, separation, you know, balance, okay, maybe he didn't have a, such a dominant V taper. He was kind of a little bit, you know, more straight down, not the, you know, dramatic. He looked, so like, a, this, he looked like a taller guy, basically. Yeah, yeah. but uh, again, us, uh, purists in bodybuilding, we're looking for that the polishment and conditioning. We appreciate him. You know, uh, I'm sure that you, you you would say, if he won, I I wouldn't have a problem. <laughs> I, I, I really wouldn't have I, would, I wouldn't have had him beating those two guys. I mean, size wise, Angel and Ahmad, they have yeah. so much more mass, and the condition was yeah. there. 
I, I, this is one case I would not have, Beirut, I would not have had a problem winning, but Jafar, I would have been, no, nah, I, I would not have had him winning that, but still. Fair enough, maybe I didn't uh, digest that uh, deeply before I, I said. You've I been, just awake, said in you've been general, awake for 48 hours too, so. <laughs> yeah, if, if you uh, look at it, just we appreciated his conditioning, nothing was really missing, so therefore could he win, but you're right, uh, uh, Angel Calderon and, and uh, Ahmed Ashkenani really beat him in uh, Muscle department, size department, fullness, roundness, uh, yeah. Um, so I agree with you. So fourth place uh, was Radoslav Angelov, I think, Bulgaria. Um, yeah, Bulgaria. And Giles said he believes he's only about 185 pounds. And I see, I could see a, his legs could stand a good 10 pounds on the quads and the hands, which would bring him up closer to the 212 limit. But I love his upper body, not in love with that guy's lower body. If he brought that lower body up to match the upper, he would have beat a couple of these guys for sure today. I agree. Beautiful upper body, complete combination of thickness, width, roundness. You know, so you you can see this. I mean, some some people uh, maybe they have a width but don't have a roundness, uh, so they're flattish looking. Yeah. And uh, you know, many in in each category in classic in two twelve and uh, open. Uh, he has everything. You know, every bodybuilder is bodybuilder. Who? everything is happening right but like you said okay when you you know move the camera down to the legs and cover upper body lower body it's like doesn't belong to the same guy mm. you know not dramatic dramatic but uh, clearly visible and like you said if you if he puts a uh, few pounds on his lower body he's going to be a contender because he's complete then then i would go for crazy conditioning because uh, he is fairly conditioned, but not greatly conditioned. So uh, again, let's speak. This is IBB Pro Division to twelve open. So if you're pro, you're supposed to bring pro conditioning. What is happening that recent years we have a amateur bringing the uh, pro conditioning and, and pro missing it. So uh, he he would need really to, you know, get that next level. You know, to really make a mark, and then he's going to be super competitive. Mm. So uh, fifth and sixth, I, I remember they looked good, but I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to. Them, to be honest, yeah. I, was, I was focused on the top four. So fifth place was Nasser Mohammed, Nasser Mohammed. from Kuwait, yeah. I believe. Yeah, uh, beautiful yeah. physique, complete everything, everything, everything. Uh, conditioning was not uh, spot on. I mean, he needed to be leaner, harder, and drier. Oh, but you see, when when somebody uh, brings a beautiful shape sometimes they're awarded i mean he's making top five anyway right yeah so exactly. maybe he thinks i'm on the right track but uh right track should be you know placing higher you know going for a victory going to win and uh, he needs to fix the condition Other, otherwise it's complete physique and uh, last the sixth place gentleman was babak akban from iran yeah, is it, yeah. Let, me, let me try to get the actual pronunciation oh, oh, lost you there so 212 i gotta say this guy's name right out of respect to him because he did look very good uh so from iran babak akbarnia that's all right yeah, yeah. i think that's correct babak okay. so akbarnia. yeah beautiful physique and uh great conditioning i mean uh iranians in general if they showed up they're they're in Good condition, great condition, or crazy condition. Yeah. So these guys are in a great condition. I mean, uh, Hadi Chupan was that next level crazy condition, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I think you know we brought it similar with the the, the cruise today. It's just like you see uh, his uh, muscle quality striations and uh, this it's uh, it's more visible from the back than from the front, mm -hmm. you know. So. Uh, there, there's some people that have a, you know, front or side or back dominant, and they can achieve that kind of conditioning. You see, Amir Amir Agis also had a, a great conditioning in general, but back from the back conditioning was off the chart, right? Yeah. So more so, I was the opposite. I could do, a, you know, <laughs> from the front, and uh, my back would never match. And, and you know, many people, many most people, people, most people. Uh, that's why yeah. you know what, because I, I just I'm throwing random shit out there. But they used to say when they say contests are won from the back, we weren't just we're not just talking about the back developments because 
Most people get very, very lean from the front, but it's much harder to get the lower back, the glutes and the hamstrings as lean as it is, you know, areas like your, your chest and your abs and your serratus and all that. So, yeah, yeah but let me but, say Iran is coming on so strong. Wow. Yes. That, that's why I would like, I mean, uh, uh, Giles told me that uh, he talked to Emilio Martinez promoter. I mean, Emilio, if you're listening, please, uh, uh, that uh, uh, he talked to him after the show and then Emilio possibly could help Iranian bodybuilders in Big Cruz make it to Alicante. Oh, that would be phenomenal. So I'm reaching out to you, Emilio, if you can make the contact through me, through directly through Big Cruz and other Iranians. Uh, I don't know how Hany Rainbow did. I mean, uh, that's another thing. I, I don't have a Hany's number. I would like to contact him and, and see because- You don't have Hany's number? I can give that to you right now. I, I don't know if you can give me, yeah, I'll, I'll call him for sure. Text me, text me later. Uh, because he found a way to bring Hadi Chopin. So let's say that uh, Becruz qualified for Olympia. How he's gonna get there? He's gonna still need uh, this kind of help. So maybe we can use the same lawyers, same team uh, that, that, that Hani managed to overcome all this uh, you know, political issues and, and have them freely compete. Uh, I, I could see uh, a lot of Iranians uh, qualifying for Olympia. Uh, okay. I see. Yeah, a, a I could, lot. I could see Beirut winning the show in Alicante in two weeks. Yeah, I, I, I clearly see that too. I mean, yeah, uh, phenomenal. he's phenomenal. Yeah. He's looks but, but you see, now imagine training for it, dieting for it, being ready for it, and that not being able to go. No. And for him, that's also what, what happened before, you know, through this pandemic. Uh, some some uh, shows were canceled, and then those that were not canceled, Iranians were not allowed to to compete. You know, so what do you do? I mean, it, it breaks my heart, really. He was, and then he finally, was, you said he was supposed to be in Prague last week, right? Yeah, and uh, Egypt. He was oh, actually, and Egypt. Yeah, and, and uh, when we talk about it, he was going to go to Dubai, and he went to Dubai. He made it to Dubai, but he could not uh, go next step to Egypt, hmm. and then he had to just return. No. You know, uh, for you competed many times. Imagine if uh, four days before the show, you are told you can't compete. Nope. No, I, I mean, I would have lost my mind. I would have cried my eyes out and screamed. And I can't, it happened so many times last year with shows being canceled, people not being, getting visas, people failing, getting a positive COVID test right before they traveled. Yeah, I just sent you Honey's number. Um, yeah, dude, I, I it, it has to be heartbreaking. I can't imagine prepping for a bodybuilding show. So much time, so much money, so much effort. You put your heart, your soul, blood, sweat, and tears. And then, oops, sorry, you can't go. Sorry, you can't come to our show. Or we're not going to have uh, these poor guys. <laughs> How did Chupan qualified? I believe also, for, yeah, 2016. I was there. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I saw him winning the amateur show, Shiru Classic in Dubai. Yeah. And the next day, you know, he was the second to uh, Rudy Winkler. So 2016, 2017, 2018, qualified each year for Olympia and, and didn't make it. And then 2019, again, he qualified not just 212, but 212 and open. Right, right. And there was a question. <laughs> and then if you remember, he showed up like a few days before, you know, so it's like uh, those guys really have it hard. So for all of you, uh, uh, that uh, don't have these kind of issues, I appreciate your position because this is reality for the, for these guys. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people watching, if they competed, they probably could drive to their contest, you know? It's like a couple of cities away or one state away. These people are going all over the, you know, they're, they're crossing 10 international borders and taking five different flights to get to their show and living on, you know, packing 48 hours worth of food just to be on airplanes. It's these guys yeah. really, they're troopers, man. I, I give it up to them. They, you gotta have a lot That's of heart right. to, to go through this. But then uh, let's uh, let's mention also the organization of the show. Uh, oh my God, uh, Vince of Strength and, and uh, Team Gardner, they pull again a, a, a magical thing. There was well over five, almost 600 amateurs competing. Wow, gee. Okay. And then all these classes that you've seen. I mean, there was like 30 something uh, men's physique and then 25 classic physique and 20 something open division. I mean, it was stacked, yeah, you know, to my detriment because uh, 
I just wanted to go to sleep and I was like, <laughs> waiting for a prejudging. And then it's like, oh, 35. Oh my God, 35, a men's physique. Yeah. No. So, and then it was, like, oh, classic physique. And then I was bikini. It's like, <laughs> we love all yeah. the divisions guys just to make it clear we love and respect all the divisions yeah I we, we just happen to be a little more interested in in opening 212 because that's you know that's well, where we, no, that's where we I, I, this, I, I was actually timing now i said like okay man's physics is coming out like do they have a time limit and uh, some guys were going like 30 40 seconds i said great maybe this is gonna go faster but then you know another guy went over a minute and you know nobody said nothing like oh so I would give, this is how I would give, five seconds for each pose, okay? Yeah. Pro bodybuilders have eight mandatory poses and uh, they, they can do a few of the other ones. Men's physique has uh, three poses, front, side, yeah. and back, or oh, two. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah. I think it's two, it's just front and back. <laughs> oh, it is, they, yeah. they, don't do so, a side, they don't do a side pose. So why would you need to you know, present this for like 40 seconds? Because you're gonna do the same pose you're just going to move your arms 10 times. Uh, I, I don't think you see, especially because now we are talking about judging the show and they, they have to hurry up. Okay. Right. Well, you know, think about this. Uh, back in the 90s, when I was doing a Night of the Champions one year, there was 55 competitors. Wow. So instead of... That, that's one... Us, you should let people know that's one division. That was just... That yeah, was the men's... Was, that was... Well, there was only one. It was men, Did they even have women's bodybuilding at that? They did, right? No, I mean, not for that of champions. There was just the uh, so yeah, it was just one one class. The show was fifty-five pro men. Wow. You know what? I might be wrong. I might be no, wrong. I, uh, I know they had over forty a couple times. I know they did. Yeah, but uh, it, it should be the the females as well because uh, yeah, it, it was uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, the long shot. Yeah, but but uh, so we didn't go for individual. Uh, there was like. Uh, two or three guys coming out and, and hitting at the same time because it would take forever. Yeah. You know, so so uh, you can uh, you can speed it up that way. Right. Yeah, I understand. Again, look, rules are rules, but uh, rules are to be improved on. So when you when you notice something, like, like we discussed that also, look for a man's physique uh, and uh, and uh, jealous notice that those guys start looking like a bodybuilders. They have like so much muscle, like, whoa. Yeah, you know, those guys, if they roll up those shorts and have legs, they can go to the classic physique immediately. Oh, yeah. Some of them wouldn't even make the cut height right. and weight, okay? They wouldn't so have they'd, 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 like, they'd be over the weight limit. They would be. Yeah. yeah. The great respect for the you know, men's physique uh, guys, but I think that they would like to have a you know, few more mandatory poses, okay? Few more, show more. And then uh, again, I said this uh, repeatedly because I want to be heard, you know, don't necessarily lose the shorts, but, uh, you know, make it higher, make it like the classic physique. So legs would be judged mm. and, uh, you know, people and uh, those, those guys would be more appreciated. You know, Logan Franklin, one of the main reasons he left men's physique was he wanted to pose. He wanted to be able to pose and show the physique from different angles, which he could not really do. As a men's physique competitor. That's correct. Because uh, let me tell you, uh, he, he just showed me when he was here with me, you know, for five days, he showed me his men's physique routine. Like I said, what do you mean men's physique routine? There is no men's physique routine. Well, he made it a routine. Yeah. He made it. He was so creative. So you can Google it and uh, see on <laughs> YouTube. He made it interesting. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's what I would uh, really urge, you know, you know how it is. Yeah. Uh, authorities would say, yeah, let, let's not change it. But uh, if you change for better and there is a great acceptance and a lot of people think this way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is not one single pro bodybuilder and champion starting from Arnold Schwarzenegger or Dorian Yates or you name anybody, they would approve shorts in uh, any IBV category that performance physique. They would never approve it. No. Okay. So. I wouldn't eat it. All right. Well, uh, as usual, <laughs> so, we got off on some crazy tangents, Milos, but it's okay. Um, yeah, you just, uh, you that's, know, what, that's what we do. If you are heard them to say no, then uh, at least we tried. Exactly. You know, the yeah. only way to get something is to try to make it happen. If you never ask, you never get. So, yeah. Um, exactly. Well, Milos, you have not slept for probably two or three days again. So appreciate <laughs> you appreciate you doing this as always. 
you're, you're dealing with athletes 24 hours a day, texting, FaceTiming and all that. So I'm sure you need a little break. Uh, I hope you get some rest later today or tomorrow yeah. or something. Thank you. And then uh, I guess uh, you'll see each other for uh, Alicante a couple of weeks from now. Yeah, hopefully. That, and then yeah. that's the last one till Toronto, I'm thinking. Yeah. Toronto, yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Toronto is December 5th. I think it's uh, officially last show of the year i hope so my goodness come on it's december you know, yeah i like the idea of multiple shows mm -hmm. i mean uh back in my time there was not so many pros nowadays there's much more pros and for some reason they're not entering the shows i mean uh mm -hmm. you see back in the 90s for me to enter any show i would always have to come on for sure vince taylor for sure kevin lebroni ronnie coleman you know, the Chris Cormier, more than like, oh, not show somebody, yeah. you know, every goddamn show, ah, you know, so it's, true. so it's like, not like a show that you can pick, oh, no, I'm just going to, you know, walk in and nobody's going to show up. If that, were know, the case, if that were the case, Milos, you would have like 20 pro wins instead of one. Yeah, yeah. You could have picked yeah. shows where none of those guys were going to be at. I'll just do that show and you would have, you know, it's not like that. It's, uh, it wasn't like that back in those days. Anyway, yeah, I, I still think that I'm the only one that did every pro show organized in multiple years, actually. So anything that is organized, I entered in a calendar year, yeah, three times. I was around and I don't remember anyone else doing as many shows as you did. No, you know, Vince did a lot, Cormier did a lot, but you, you, did, you did more than all those guys. I remember you were in every show, every show. Yeah, I was like, oh, there's Milo. But, but, yeah, I, I tell you why. Uh, initially, and this is how it is, uh, as a new athlete, I have to, you know, uh, in the beginning of the year, actually end of the, the previous year, sign up for which show you would, you know, agree to compete. And then uh, promoters would see your name. And then if you are attractive enough for them, they would offer you contract, flight, hotel, and all oh, that stuff. Okay. So initially, of course, I had to take care of it myself in 91. Ouch. But then uh, uh, as soon as uh, 92, 92 is okay what do you want to do everything so i signed up for everything and i got the contract for everything so i did everything and then from that point on like uh, pretty much i would sign up and, and uh, thank god i had my uh, expenses paid which makes it so much easier and many many of these guys that are competing now the only reason why they're not doing the next show and uh, show after that is because they can't afford it yeah my god yeah i couldn't afford to fly to all these countries me if I had to, on my own money, and pay my own hotel, I couldn't do all these trips like these people do. There's no way. Yeah. Put, my, put my family in debt. No, I'm not doing that. Anyway. <laughs> all right. Mishko, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Great wrap-up of Romania Muscle Fest Pro in Bucharest, Romania. We'll do it again in two weeks, but I hope you get some rest. Great job with uh, your clients. As always, they look phenomenal. And yeah, you're one thank of the you. best. You're one of the very best coaches in this world. So... Glad to have you as part of this. Guys, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Make sure you're always getting notifications. Comment, thumbs up. Do all that good crap, please. We love you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. See you next time. All right, Ron.